Hey everybody, today I want to show you a material that I created. It is creating the sort of displacement that you see over here on the uh, on the model. This is a custom model and I'll show you why I did that in just a minute. Um, I got the idea of this from a video by CG Howe where he was doing water droplets. And I took that idea and then added a couple uh, additional items to it and use the latest 4.26. So um, I hope you appreciate uh, what I've done here. And uh, let's just get into this. I'll show you the material and then I'll show you the model that I created as well. So real quickly, I'm going to go through the presets on the material itself, the important items. So you want to set it to translucent. I also set it to two sided. If you scroll down here to translucency, you also want to set it to surface translucency volume. Okay, and you can go through and read through this, but um, essentially it has to do with how uh, light uh, reflects in the translucency. And this is the best one to use for glass and water. All right, so now let's go through all the uh, the settings from top to bottom, and I'll just explain them as we go through. So the first one is specular. So uh, the amount of specularity on non-metallic surfaces. Um, yeah, the default is zero to one. So here we're going to bump up the specularity to 20. What is this? Value between, I, I don't know, maybe 20 doesn't even matter. Okay, maybe only one, one would be the highest. Um, the next one we're going to go to is roughness. So I set the roughness to zero, so it's, it's perfectly smooth. The emissive color, I'm going to set it to a light blue. Um, opacity. So if you've uh, ever used the Fresnel, um, what a Fresnel does is it is... Uh, let me show you a preview of it real quick. So with a Fresnel, what you get is on the, let me see if this is better. No, let's do, so with a Fresnel, what you get is on the outside, it's it's a lighter color and on the inside it is darker. So what we're doing here is we are using that Fresnel and it is then um, being passed in to the opacity. So with the, the translucency, you get the outside being more opaque than the inside. And so the inside is more um, translucent. Um, the next item is the normal. So uh, the normal is tied up to all of this here. So let me explain this. So you take the texture coordinates. I add a multiplier here. This multiplier allows you to scale the, uh, the effect uh, either greater or smaller, and I'll show you the impact of that in just a minute. So then we're going to go to a panner. The panner, um, I just have an input here, uh, which is just, you know, X and Y, and that controls the speed um, either going positive X, negative X, positive Y, or negative Y. So here at a negative Y, you can see that's causing uh, it to move down, right? And we plug in these UV coordinates coming out of the panner into our texture samples. The texture sample here is noise mask. Uh, this comes with the game presets. And here is the normal for that as well. Okay. Then I take the output of that and I multiply it. This allows me to again scale the effect. Um, this output then is multiplied by the vertex normal, which will displace the vertex, as you can see, 
um, the model for this is actually a sphere. So if we look at the model that I'm using, this is the model right here. This is the model altogether. So it's just a sphere, but when we are displacing it, um, we're displacing it along the vertex normals, okay? So we multiply those together and shove it into world position offset. Very last item is refraction. And so that is the amount, uh, the index of refraction for the surface. So that's what gives you that sort of uh, uh, this sheen uh, that you're seeing. Um, yeah, so uh, that's pretty much it. That is the material. And now the item that I apply it to is, um, if we go back to here, this is the high poly uh, polygon that I created. So this is just a sphere. And let me show you, let me show you the, um, the model in, uh, three, in uh, Blender that I created. Okay, so here I'm going to just create that high poly sphere. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new sphere. And then once we get it added, we're gonna subdivide. Um, we're gonna subdivide it so that we have a lot of vertices on this sphere. Uh, when you do that, that way when you apply that displacement, <clears throat> it's got a lot of geometry to work with and it makes the displacement look very smooth. Otherwise, you'll end up with sort of this jagged, very sharp corners kind of thing. So uh, yeah, so it's pretty simple. So I created a sphere. I subdivided it, and then I'm just gonna export it out here. Once we get it exported out, then I'm gonna drag it into Unreal. It's gonna um, import just as a static mesh, and uh, that's my high poly. So with that selected then, um, you select it, and then you go back and you click on that last uh, node right there, and that will use that preview mesh. So right now, this doesn't look that great because I was using a different noise, and it does not look nearly as good as the previous videos uh, because that the noise mesh was just not accurate. So here, I just wanted to show you some examples of messing with the multiplier that I added. So by adding the multiplier, you can control how um, uh, the displacement is applied to the mesh. So here it is scaled out, so the displacement is much larger and it's sort of, uh, you know, uh, not as granular. And so here we've, we've increased it and that is much more uh, wavy, I guess. Yep, so you can see the waves are getting tinier and tinier. And um, if you continue to go up, you can get, again, like this effect here is like where it's vibrating really rapidly. And so you get those very quick waves. All right, everybody. Well, that's about all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like it, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and leave a comment below if there's something else you want to see. Have a great day and a safe day. Bye.